Hi, my name is Jonathan Genzen, and I'm an associate professor at the University of Utah and chief operating officer at ARUP Laboratories. I'm a clinical pathologist or a doctor that specializes in laboratory testing. As I learned about COVID vaccines becoming available in the US, I wondered what's actually in them and how do they really work? I assume others may have similar questions. So we put this brief presentation together to help describe two vaccines, one from a partnership between Pfizer and BioNTech and the other from a company called Moderna. We've provided this information with our staff here and we think others may also find it helpful. I really hope you do. You're welcome to share this with others as well. I want to start by emphasizing that COVID-19 vaccines from different companies will use a variety of approaches to prompt the body to form an immune response against SARS-CoV-2. That's the virus that causes COVID-19. Most of these approaches will target something called the spike or S protein on the surface of the virus. This spike protein is used by the virus to infect cells in your body. Some vaccines, such as those developed by Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna, use something called mRNA as their active ingredient. These are the two we'll be talking about in this presentation. The first mRNA vaccine to receive an emergency use authorization from the US Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, was from Pfizer BioNTech. A large clinical trial showed it to be 95% effective in preventing COVID-19. A second mRNA vaccine received an emergency use authorization from the FDA a week later from a company called Moderna. Their large clinical trial showed it to be 94.1% effective in preventing COVID-19. These are incredible results for vaccine clinical trials. This brief presentation will focus on three key questions. First, what is mRNA and what does it do? Second, what's actually in these two vaccines? And then third, how do these vaccines really work? Let's start by talking about mRNA or messenger RNA. DNA is the complete genetic blueprint in our bodies. It's found in all of our cells. DNA is then transcribed into messenger RNA, which is abbreviated mRNA. mRNA is the temporary message to make something, more specifically protein. In your cells, mRNA is then translated into protein, and protein is what is actually produced. Proteins are the building blocks that help us build cells and tissues and enzymes that help our cells function normally. To summarize, you can think of DNA as being the cookbook, mRNA as being the recipe you print out right before you go to the kitchen, and protein as the cake that is actually made. You might be asking, what on earth does this have to do with COVID-19? Here's a picture of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It's actually extremely small, you can't see it, but this is a diagram of what it would look like if you could. Spike proteins are present all along the surface of the virus. And these spike proteins are actually used by the virus to help it infect cells in the human airways. Because they are critical for the virus and because they are on the surface of the virus, they're ideal candidates for vaccine development. Here's the deal. If your body makes antibodies to block the spike protein, or if your immune cells learn to recognize the spike protein, your body can destroy the virus and prevent it from infecting cells. The goal here is immunity against the virus that causes COVID-19. So let's think about what we've just discussed and how this could be used for a vaccine. As a reminder, mRNA is translated into protein normally by your cells. This happens all the time. These two vaccines actually contain mRNA, but just for the spike protein. So they contain instructions for your own cells to make some of that spike protein. Your body then temporarily makes some of that spike protein. Your immune system sees this protein and develops a healthy and robust immune response against just that protein, therefore against the virus itself. Absolutely amazing. There's some really important points here to remember. You cannot get COVID from these mRNA vaccines. It is biologically impossible. The vaccines do not contain mRNA instructions to make an entire virus. The vaccine's encoded mRNA is just enough information to temporarily make some spike protein. You can think about it like this fancy red car here. 
It's just like making some side view mirrors sticking off the side of the car. No matter how many mirrors you may build, mirrors alone can never actually become a car. So what's actually in these two vaccines? Let's start with the one from Pfizer-BioNTech. The active ingredient, like we've already discussed, is mRNA. But there's a few other things that help this to work. These are called the inactive ingredients, but they're still really important. The first of these are lipids. Lipids are a family of molecules, just like fats and cholesterol, that your body uses for energy and to form healthy cell membranes. In the vaccines, these are similarly used to form lipid nanoparticles. Pretty cool words, right? As shown in this picture, these lipid nanoparticles surround and protect the mRNA, and they help the mRNA get inside of the cells once the vaccine is administered. The Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has four lipids, as listed here, and don't worry, all lipids have really long names. That's not unusual, it's just how they're named by chemists. Next, the vaccine contains some pH buffers and salts. These help create a stable solution for the lipid nanoparticles, and they help ensure the vaccine is comfortable when administered. Finally, the vaccine contains a stabilizer, which happens to be sucrose, also known as table sugar. This helps protect the vaccine during freezing and thawing. It's important to emphasize that this vaccine does not contain any mercury, thimerosal, or other preservatives. It's also not made in eggs. While some rare allergic responses have been observed during vaccinations, these are still being investigated. Clinical providers performing vaccinations will be prepared to handle allergic reactions if they were to occur. Next, let's talk about what's in the Moderna vaccine. It's actually pretty similar, but with some different components. The active ingredient here is also mRNA. In this vaccine, it's called mRNA-1273. The Moderna vaccine also has inactive ingredients. Again, the most important of these are the lipid nanoparticles. It's the same principle as the other vaccine, but just different ingredients to make these particles. And the same deal, all lipids have really long names. The Moderna vaccine also contains some pH buffers and salt to help create a stable environment for the lipid nanoparticles and to help ensure the vaccine is pH buffered and comfortable when administered. For those of you who work in labs, you may recognize these first two ingredients as commonly used TRIS buffer. Finally, the vaccine also contains sucrose as a stabilizer. As with the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine, the Moderna vaccine also does not contain any mercury, thimerosal, or other preservatives. It's also not made in eggs. There's a few really cool features to the vaccine mRNA that help it to work. mRNA is normally made from four nucleic acids, adenine, uridine, cytosine, and guanine. In these two vaccines, there's something called uridine substitution, where a similar nucleic acid, methyl pseudouridine, is substituted for uridine. For those of you who enjoy chemistry, and I know you're out there, it's shown in these two chemical structures. The arrow pointing to the uridine structure shows a carbon atom, and this is replaced by a nitrogen and a methyl group in methyl pseudouridine. That's it. So why make this substitution? Well, there's two important reasons. First, this suppresses the innate immune destruction that's typical of mRNA. In other words, if they just used mRNA, the body would immediately destroy it. This change just lets it hang around a little longer. Second, it improves the mRNA's translation into protein. That makes protein more efficiently. So this little change has a big benefit in helping the vaccine to work better. Also, this is well-established chemistry and recognized long before COVID came along. What else is special about the mRNA? mRNA is a long chain of nucleic acids with one end called the five prime end and the other called the three prime end. This sequence and organization of nucleic acids in mRNA is really what makes it work. Here's a simplified diagram representing how the mRNA is organized in both the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines. First, the mRNA has what's called a cap. This promotes mRNA stability and helps it to delay innate immune destruction. Next, the mRNA has both 5' and 3' untranslated regions. Similar regions are found in all mRNA, and they help to regulate protein translation and promote mRNA stability and translation efficiency. 
As with most mRNA, it has what's called a poly-A tail, or a sequence of adenines on the end that promote mRNA stability and minimize degradation. Most importantly, as discussed earlier, the mRNA contains the sequence and instructions to make the COVID spike protein. The sequences also have two substitutions so that the protein has proline amino acids at two key positions. Proteins actually have three-dimensional structure. These substitutions make sure the protein is folding into just the right shape for your immune system to recognize it properly. So let's bring this all together and now finally explain how these two vaccines work. The vaccine is given by injection in your shoulder. The mRNA containing lipid nanoparticles transfer mRNA into some of your cells. Here's a diagram showing these key steps. The mRNA from the vaccine enters the cell and goes into the cytoplasm. It doesn't go into the nucleus or become part of the DNA. This is just a temporary message. The mRNA then interacts with the ribosomes. This is part of your cell's own machinery to make protein from mRNA. The cells then temporarily make and release some spike protein for your immune system to see. The mRNA is then degraded, just like all other cell mRNA. Again, it's just a temporary message. A second dose of the vaccine is then given three weeks later for the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and one month later for the Moderna vaccine. Because your body is able to temporarily make some spike protein, your immune system then develops antibodies and cell-based immunity against the spike protein and therefore against the virus that causes COVID-19. Pretty amazing. To summarize, the active ingredient in these two vaccines is mRNA. There's a few other ingredients, however, that also help ensure that the vaccine works, is stable, and is comfortable to administer. There's no mercury or preservatives in these two vaccines, and they are not made in eggs. During vaccination, cells in your body use that mRNA to temporarily make some spike protein. Your body then develops an immune response to that spike protein, and this leads to defense against COVID-19. I'd like to thank you for listening, and I hope you found this presentation helpful. For more information, please visit the CDC website, which has information on vaccinations and other resources related to COVID-19. Lastly, I would personally like to thank all of the medical laboratory professionals who've helped support COVID-19 testing during the pandemic. While these individuals are often under-recognized, we owe so much to them for their amazing work and to the families that have supported them during this crisis.